All right, thank you so much for coming to the Crypto Compare MJAC Blockchain Summit here in London. For those who are taking a seat, thank you. Um, I'm Stefan Tuell. I'm the former CCO of Ethereum, and I'm currently the founder of Atlas Noya, an investment fund here in London as well. Um, we got some amazing speakers today. If you could, at the back, take a seat, very much appreciate it. The Wi-Fi is a public Wi-Fi. We encourage you to tweet. The hashtag is hashtag MJack. All right, so please use this and take pictures, reshare, and so on. Uh, without further ado, our first speaker is uh, Chris Berniski from Placeholder, and he's going to talk to us about valuating crypto assets. Chris, welcome. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here bright and early. Well, I guess not that early. Um, so I'm Chris Berniski. I'm uh, one of the partners at Placeholder. Placeholder is a venture capital firm, not a hedge fund, uh, that specializes in decentralized information networks incentivized with a token. Um, we chose to do a venture fund with a 10-year time horizon because we're bullish on the next 10 years of crypto. Um, and don't want to be distracted by the markets and want to really work to support the engineers that we choose to back. Um, some of you may also know me from the book that I wrote um, and some of the earlier research that I did while at ARK Investment Management. I'm going to talk today, uh, if I can get the presentation up on stage, there we go, um, about relative and fundamental crypto asset valuations. So I'll start with relative valuations um, and uh, go over some commonly used techniques in the market. Um, and then I will switch to the much more contentious uh, intrinsic valuations. So to start, crypto networks use a native asset, a crypto asset, to coordinate the supply side and demand side of information networks. And this is where uh, we are finding a new way to organize and incentivize human activity in a digital setting, and this is where we go far beyond currencies, and it's much more an innovation uh, along the lines of what, in the early 1600s, the creation of the joint stock uh, company allowed merchants uh, to uh, raise capital to fund long-term journeys and spread the risk, uh, and, and the investors would participate in the gains. We are really finding a new way um, to do this in, in the digital world, and so, in 2016, I put out a paper with Coinbase claiming that Bitcoin uh, was the first of its kind in a new asset class. And at this time, most people laughed um, because the aggregate network value of crypto was 10 billion. Um, we're now roughly 30x later from that, and a lot of people are coming back to the drawing board saying, okay, maybe there is something here. Um, though the, the bears are coming out of the woodwork given the current market action, um, but this is a recursive cycle um, that happens time and again, and speculation lays the foundation for innovation. So I'm not personally concerned, um, but we will be talking about valuation for those of you that are concerned about the market. So if you agree crypto is a new asset class, um, then unique value drivers will require new valuation methodologies. And I firmly believe this, um, but not everyone uh, agrees this. So Professor Dammer Duran, who's a famous valuations expert uh, at NYU, has, has written in his blog, I don't believe that cryptocurrencies are now or ever will be an asset class. You cannot value it or invest in it. You can only price it and trade it. So I give a lot of credence to Professor Dam Duran's background. He's done a lot more valuation work than I have. Um, but lots of times, people who are indoctrinated in a prior way of thinking have a hard time shifting their mind um, to think about a new paradigm. And so I'll give my case for why I think you can um, value or, or derive a fundamental valuation for a lot of crypto networks. So like I said, we'll be going over relative and intrinsic or, or fundamental. And starting with, with relative valuations, currently the most common technique um, is using the network value. So I use the term network value instead of market cap um, because these are information networks, not companies, and network value is the number of coins outstanding multiplied by the price per coin. And 
This is actually quite a dangerous uh, relative valuation technique uh, to use because there's a lot of manipulation that goes on and a lot that's hidden beneath the surface. So to start this discussion, um, I'll read a, a string of tweets from Nick Carter where he says, so Monero V is the latest version of something I call the market cap game. Part of the appeal of these forks is that they get to claim a supply of X million coins, but of course only a fraction circulate. So they get a glamour spot on coin market cap with minimal liquidity. Why would anyone bid up the price? Because a fat market cap gets you a nice spot on all the ranking sites, and if you do it for long enough, investors FOMO into your coin. It's a marketing strategy, and you have extremely high leverage due to the tiny float. And so this is made worse by the fact that um, crypto assets are generally ranked by the circulating supply. Um, and so if that circulating supply is manipulated, even just temporarily, uh, a lot of investors will see that coin um, and in a very momentum-driven space, uh, as Nick says, will FOMO into the coin. So to give uh, some numbers and, and, and to dimension how bad this gets, if we go to coin market cap, um, there's a way to rank by circulating supply and by total supply. And I did this for, for tokens, which are assets that circulate on top of other crypto networks. And the, the two top offenders at the time when I pulled the numbers were Exchange Union and Veritasium. And Exchange Union had a total supply that was worth $18 billion and a circulating supply that was worth $12 million. While Veritasium had a total supply that was $12.5 billion with a circulating supply that was worth $250 million. And this means that the Veritasium investors were expecting a 50x dilution, whether or not they knew it. Um, and the exchange union investors were expecting a 1500x dilution. And this is important because um, while some investors will look for the biggest assets and say invest in, in those biggest assets based on circulating supply, some value crypto investors will look for the undervalued assets. They'll say, hey, this crypto network has, has a lot of potential, but it's only worth $12 million. Um, this could appreciate a lot. But if they don't also look at the total supply, then they're not taking into account the potential for dilution. Um, and I just gave examples for things that have fixed supply, but the same thing applies to mined assets um, that have a time-consistent rules-based monetary policy. And so, for example, if we look at Dash versus Bitcoin, Bitcoin is currently inflating at roughly 4% annually. Uh, in 2020, that will drop to 2%. This is, again, baked into the software, part of Bitcoin's monetary policy and the clearing and settling of Bitcoin transactions. Dash, slightly younger crypto asset, is it, it, current supply inflation is 9% annually. Neither of those numbers is that bad, but you 